This time on Pedalbox, it's time for another road trip. We go back to Tucson and talk to people with more awesome builds, look around the show and watch the guys fails and wins at the strip. All coming up on a two-part Pedalbox special at Roadkill Zip Tie Drags. We started at Irwindale Speedway again with coffee, donuts, and had a walk around all of the assembling cars for the convoy. Lots of familiar faces, including Matt with the Punish Stang, were back again. And there were some new ones, like this MX-5 based go-kart with an eBay Turbo. It's a really nice vet cart substitute for those places where you just can't get a Corvette. The guys were here too, chatting to people and filming an episode around the Cadillac swapped Gremlin. We've made it a couple of hundred miles down the road and we've stopped for lunch here at Rebel Barbecue in Blythe, just near the Arizona state line. A couple of miles from here we're going to stop for gas and carry on, but right now we're going to have a quick wander around the car parks. So just behind me here we've got the Vanishing Paint Challenger from Roadkill itself. This is being driven by Cotton and Dave from Faster with Finnegan. Left of that we've got the Punish Stang, built by Imperial Beach Dad. Absolute beast of a car. He actually built it at Zip Tie Drags last year. I say built it, he put an entire engine swap and rear axle in the thing, which is pretty heroic, and then ran it down the strip during the event. And we've got yet another Mustang here, absolute beauty of a thing, loads and loads of patina, 10 out of 10. Last year we saw this, this actually had a missing Maserati sticker up in the back, so they're doing their bit to try and find that poor little Mazda. So if you've not been to Zip Tie Drags before, there's a lot of components to it, and this year they've added in the burnout box. And there's one guy in an E34 that's already ripped his tires apart. Obviously there's the drag strip as well, but there's also the massive show that they pick a load of winners from. And there is all sorts of stuff here. There's the flat rods that we've just taken a look at, the Jeeps, we've got some pickups, there's a really clean looking duster over there, an old school Hornet, just all sorts of things all mingling in together, and then they pick the winners at the end of the day. And then the other big one they've got running this afternoon, they've got the Hoopty $3,000 Challenge, where they invite people down and if you've got something that's under $3,000, you can race to see who's got the best piece of junk under that $3,000 limit. They've also got Fans versus Freiburger and Finnegan, where they're doing all sorts of races in various different roadkill cars that they've brought down. Unfortunately, the Gremmy has not made it from yesterday. Putting the new engine in on Thursday, they managed to destroy it while well, they revved it just as they were getting ready to leave, and it has no oil pressure. I did a couple of bits of testing, and they added, obviously added it into the episode that they're filming, but at the end of the day, that gremlin is dead once again. For some reason, it just seems a little bit jinxed that you cannot put a Cadillac 500 cubic inch V8 into a gremlin and have any kind of reliability. Who knew? So I'm here with Duke with his flat rod Model A, so he's going to tell us a little bit more about it. Started out as a 1930 Model A. Uh, bought it off a gentleman in El Paso. Uh, it was kind of like basically a roller at that point. Mm -hmm. Brought it home, um, ripped the body off the frame, threw the frame that came with it away, and uh, built the frame out of just two by three box steel. Nice. Uh, the motor is a 454 big block out of a mid 70s Chevy Suburban. Okay. I wonder uh, if it was a motorhome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Standard source for all big block 454s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. go down, motorhome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The transmission in it's a turbo 350 transmission. Yeah. Uh, the rear end's a GM 10 bolt that's built to the tilt with oversized axles, uh, 411 gears, full posi. Um, the front end and the rear end, the, the car is fully bagged front and rear. It's, it's a triangulated four link bag system in the rear. Uh, it's a cantilever with a pan hard bar in the front end. Mm -hmm. uh, the intake setup is out of a like a 19 mid 1950s jet boat um, that I s scrapped out of a junkyard for about 50 bucks. <laughs> Uh, winner, winner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and this, this car was just literally a, a matter of, uh, you know, I had a vision in my head of kind of what I wanted to do yeah. and what I wanted it to become and no, just awesome. little bits at a time with, you know, I definitely had lots of help from some friends and, you know, I mean, one person, you know, I don't care who you are, yeah. but one person, there's no way you can go through a car and not have help from people. The steering box under the dash is out of a uh, Volkswagen Beetle. Um, <laughs> nice. It's all welded, full welded steering yeah. box and everything. 
Uh, but it, I drive it. I mean, I put, you know, sometimes I'll put 100 miles on it on a weekend, sometimes yeah. 200 miles in a weekend. Nice. And it drives. I mean, I, I take it up and down the interstate, and I can do 100 miles an hour in it. No problem, and it handles fine. Nice. Uh, Have you had it down the strip, or do I, you? I don't, so I don't, I don't like to take it down the strip. Oh, fair it's enough. It's not a quarter mile car. Yeah. I built it to cruise and drive. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and that's kind of what I do. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I do. I just, you know, I, I take it and, and drive with it and everything oh, else. And nice. <laughs> As is normal for the roadkill events, the lanes were open all day for test and tune, which meant we saw all sorts of ridiculous matchups. We had sedans versus pickups, 50s versus 70s, road tyres versus slick tyres, you name it, it was there. It was an absolute whale of a time. Sometimes you saw a dude running 16s next to a dude running 10s, but that's all fun. While everyone was watching Fans versus Freiburger and Finnegan, we managed to get ourselves up into the tower overlooking everything. So we got some really good shots of the cars going down the strip. A lot of the popular cars were out in force with Vanishing Paint, the Dragoir, and the Naz Carlo, all taking on the fans in a knockout challenge. spoil it too much for you because I think they were doing an episode on this and we don't want to beat them to the punch but we'll leave you with a bunch of these pulls and let you come to your own conclusions.
Well, that wraps up this episode of Pedal Box at Zip Tie Drags. But wait, there's more. We've got a whole second episode coming with the 3K Hoopty Challenge and a bunch more chat with some people who are at the event. So stay tuned for that. And it wouldn't be a trip to America without Adrian bringing back a bunch of parts for his Thunderbeard. Right, we've got some pretty identifiable chrome here. We've got the hood ornament that you might remember from our restoration episode. Hopefully you get that on soon. Yeah, mine was pretty badly pitted, so new is better than refurbished. These are support shock towers. So these will go from the shock towers onto the firewall and stop any body flex. Well, not any body flex, but some, some of it anyway. These I recognize. These are pretty iconic on the old T-Birds, the yeah. headlight surrounds. Yeah, so we've got a pair of those, because again, yeah. mine were pretty badly pitted. Now these are door jams. These door jam surrounds that fit in inside of the front fender. Mine are okay, but they're not great, but we can paint these up, get them fixed, and then put these back on as a one-off, one-on, rather than taking off and waiting for ages. So it'll hopefully keep the car on the road for longer. And then I'm after seeing. that, we've got service parts. So that's a set of points, and we've got a, a new dizzy. And this is a couple of voltage regulators. So hopefully we won't need these because mine will be fine, but just in case, we have spares. Yep, and this looks pretty vintage. Is that like period? I'm pretty sure that is period to the time to the car, especially with the box. Nice. That is some new old stock. John at T-Bird Hustle in California, in Ontario, uh, LA, he was really, really good, uh, really, really helpful. He hung on to this stuff after I bought it and then we flew out. So we actually bought this in, I think, November and then waited until we went and picked it up in January. That really is it for this time. Don't forget to check out our Patreon if you'd like to support us and our builds. And if you'd like to buy any of our merch, check out pedalbox.show slash shop for t-shirts, hats, hoodies like these, stickers, you name it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.